morning, Tena Koto Katoa. Today I am joining you from Sunrise Saltwater Country, land of the Gadigal people. And I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're all joining today. I reflect on their deep connection to land, water and culture, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Now, welcome to our new member event. And it's wonderful to see that we've got one or two existing members online as well. And thank you for joining us to hear about all the things that are on offer when you join the Infrastructure Sustainability Council community. On behalf of the board and the team, congratulations on joining the ISC. You're in good company. Our membership reflects the diversity of the infrastructure sector. You're joining over 200 other organizations that are the most engaged and committed to ensuring that social, cultural, environmental and economic benefits are delivered through infrastructure. There is much to gain and also much to contribute as a member of the ISC. And today, the team are gonna take you through the many different ways that you can maximize your membership. What you put in is what you get out. Everything that we do here at the ISC is underpinned by our five-year strategic plan. And that takes us to 2025, halfway to a really big, important deadline, 2030. This plan was co-created with industry by the ISC team and every year we track our progress against the plan. We regularly monitor it with our board and we provide updates to you, our members, at our annual AGM. Now that's occurring in November later this year and I do hope that you could join us either virtually or in person. As we move from a decade of determination into a decade of action and a decade of decarbonisation, I really want to encourage all of you to actively engage with our team and with one another. There are so many ways that you can get involved and we're here to help. So no matter where you start, what's most important is that you've already taken the leap to lead. We're all on this path together, but like any journey, you'll each experience it differently. You're here for different reasons and you'll each move at a different pace. So no matter what your story is, always do what is right for you and aligned with your organization's values. When you encounter speed bumps or roadblocks, my team is here to help. Just reach out. In thinking about why you're all here, um, it's really about change. Some organizations change because they are leaders challenging the norms and are early adopters. Others, because in today's era of accelerated delivery, it's expected. And then there are those that are simply being pulled with the tide. If you've joined this call, thank you for being here. You are in one of those first two waves. And there are three main drivers why your organization would be here and showing up today. The first is compliance. The second is competitive edge. And the third is commitment. Now, you can determine where you are on that journey um, if I describe some of the characteristics as you move along that maturity model. So when you're at the beginning of your journey, a primary motivation is usually compliance. This is the start of your, um, your adventure and sustainability has got many parallels with safety. Our maturity model is one of them. So when you're in compliance mode, you typically have one person in your organization that is responsible for you, uh, for your organization to tick all the boxes. That's how it's perceived. Your organization may train one person as an IS accredited professional, will attend some of our events and connect with others uh, that are like-minded um, peers outside of your organization. Your management team knows that this is important and they're making sure that you've got time. 
but it is reacting. And right now, it may not be a high order priority. You might also be at the cusp when more and more people in your organization are becoming aware of sustainability and recognize a more proactive approach is necessary. You begin to help rising awareness uh, and capability in your organization. You start building your bench strength. You'll have an obligation to enhance sustainability capability across your organization and through our sector. And it really starts with all the teams in your organization. So your training will extend to slightly wider disciplines than just the sustainability practitioner. Uh, it will include sales, procurement, engineering, and some of the allied professions in your organization will also start to become a lot more interested in what you're doing. There's going to be more engagement and a sense of both personal and professional pride. You're going to start becoming more involved in our working groups. Your products and services will be listed on our iSupply directory and in the materials calculator. And your team are going to start to begin feeling a little bit more comfortable about sharing emails and links and news items and case studies. And I see thought leadership. Increasingly, your colleagues are going to start asking you for help and also making suggestions. There's no such thing as a free lunch. But importantly, it's understood that sustainability is starting to become a very core component of your competitive edge. Now, you might be a little further progressed than that, and you'll know when you're at the commitment stage, when your organization is widely engaged with the ISC from top through all of the tiers and teams. Personally, you've developed a sense of agency across your network and in your organization. You'll have a culture of continuous improvement and you'll be helping others along the journey too. You'll be doing this by sharing your thought leadership. You'll be proudly sponsoring and presenting at our events. You, your peers, and some of your leaders will have joined our RISE mentoring program. Your work is going to be showcased in our annual impact report, and you'll be engaged in our advocacy coalitions, driving the next chart, um, or at least charting the next path forward. All of these things are aimed at advancing policy standard specifications and our practice. And we do this through white papers or high level engagement with government and industry. Increasingly, when you're in commitment stage, your executives are going to be invited and attend round tables and start to reciprocate by inviting the ISC to brief your SLTs, your boards, on the targeted action and uptake that you're experiencing. We'll share with you industry trends and you'll be invited to speak on panels uh, and nominate for our ISC board. Your early career professionals are going to be participating in um, pop-up opportunities, initiatives that we might have. They'll be joining some of webinars and events. But most importantly, you will start to feel and see a change in your organization. Sustainability will become your culture. And you will be known for the positive impact that you are creating. So no matter where you've chosen to start, and it doesn't matter where you, are, where you are on the journey, our team is here to help. So we thank you for your commitment and you work, you're warmly welcomed into a community of collaboration that is here to create positive change. We're all really looking forward to actively engaging with you and to help your organization measurably demonstrate your leadership, your progress, and your commitment to a positive future for people, planet, and the economy. Now, to tell you more, um, I'm going to hand over to a whole range of my team, but to get us started and take you through the agenda for today is our General Manager for Industry Engagement, Jane Nichols. I know that many of you already have met with Jane, but she is uh, ready and uh, going to take us through the agenda for today. Jane, over to you. Thank you very much, Ainsley. I, I really appreciate that positioning 
to our audience of new members. And uh, I also want to thank those of you that have joined us today uh, who are already members, perhaps have been with us for a short time already. There's nothing like a, a bit of a refresher. Um, let me take you through the agenda. So this uh, looks like it could be arduous, but I promise you it won't. We'll move through this quite swiftly, but our endeavor is most certainly to make sure that you're aware of all of the opportunity um, for both input and for learning, for knowledge, and for, for a realization of your commitment. Um, we're going to cover what your membership of the ISC uh, really means and how you can activate it. We'll look at marketing and communications, um, the great work that's going on in learning and development. Uh, we'll give you a, a line of sight into our ratings work. Uh, and then at 11 a.m. we will uh, communicate how we're expanding the reach of IS ratings with some very new work that's going on. We'll go into our technical and working groups, which is an opportunity available to you, our iSupply online directory, uh, a lot going on in the advocacy space uh, and into events and networking before we open up for uh, a Q&A. So um, we'll get underway now, we'll keep to time and please don't hesitate to keep your questions coming through and we'll look forward to answering as many of those as we can uh, at 11.30 this morning. So initially, can I just make a very warm welcome to our newest members. Um, there's some great brands here and we are so delighted that you've taken the decision to join us on this journey of commitment to change and that you're embedding that in your organization. Um, if we go to the next slide, you'll see that you're in great company. The value chain is extensive um, and we've broken this up for you into the various groupings of members that we have. Uh, we will make this uh, content available to you post the webinar so you might want to have a look at who's involved with us already from contractors through delivery agencies, government policy and regulation, consultants and if we change over to the next slide, suppliers, operators, the not-for-profit sector, industry association, and SMEs. So take a look at that in, uh, in your own time. I think you'll see that um, it's a very, very powerful group of committed members. So let's get underway. Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk to you about will be elaborated on by the various uh, members of our team who are going to be talking to each of these areas. But it's really important for me just to give you a headline outline of these areas. The first of which is uh, your membership is very much about being part of a committed community. It's about ensuring that you have every opportunity possible to network with others from right across the value chain uh, and that we provide you with the environments where you can actively engage, whether that's engagement in person or virtually, all of those options will be provided. Um, we produce on a constant basis, uh, events you can attend, publications. There's a newsletter every fortnight, podcasts, extensive social media for you to engage with, um, thought leadership papers, and Ainsley referred to our annual impact report, which is just a phenomenal reference tool, which we produce each year and is something that you can also be part of. And of course, we have a number of networking events, forums, web webinars, and of course, our conferencing. As members, you get all of these access to them uh, at preferential pricing. And what I would say is it's not only an opportunity for you to consume this content, most importantly, it's an opportunity for you to contribute to this. In respect to our L&D or learning and development area, there is just so much work going on. We, of course, do all of our uh, regular training uh, for the technical side of our business, 
but we're increasingly looking at all parts of a hierarchy across a number of sectors. Uh, but one thing's for sure, sustainability is the leadership competency of our time and we're doing some great work here. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that Cloda from our team will be talking to you about that in more depth shortly. Advocacy and influence. The IFC is now sustainable infrastructure's peak body in both Australia and New Zealand. Um, our perspective is very much that uh, it's critical that you're a participant in the ratings program and all that we do in terms of compliance. But you will see that we are entirely committed to the importance of influencing um, everything from our wider community through to government, key stakeholders uh, and everything in between. You have the opportunity to join, whether it's a regional group or a specific working area where you're concentrating on an aspect of sustainability that really uh, is looking for your input and participation. We'll be talking about iSupply, uh, an online showcase uh, for particularly our manufacturers and suppliers to profile and promote your products and services. And for those of you who've chosen to take what was called previously our premium membership or our value plus membership, um, you will enjoy some really significant uh, additional no charge uh, listings on this directory. So something really worth having a look into if you haven't already. Preferential pricing and access is um, an aspect of everything you'll do when you engage with the ISC. There's deep savings for you, whether it's in IS ratings, in our learning and development program opportunities, across all of our engagement activity, um, and your access will include um, opportunities to join one of six technical working groups, and similarly, one of six advocacy coalitions which are in fact recruiting right now we've just gone to market with five of these in the last two weeks. I think Ainsley picked this up uh, as a really significant aspect of her communication. Becoming a member of the ISC you're really taking a bold leadership position where you are communicating uh, and uh, inputting to ensuring that from a point of view of delivering social, cultural, economic and environmental benefits, you are doing this actively and aligning, aligning with um, the ISC's work. It's, a, it's showcasing leadership, it's showcasing commitment and it's communicating that to your team, to government, key stakeholders, opinion leaders and of course the global community. Um, I'm not going to go into this now, but two really important opportunities that I've touched on already, technical working groups and our uh, membership coalitions are two areas that we particularly want to talk about because they're open to you to participate in um, throughout your membership. So on that, from that point, um, I might leave it there. I'm going to be handing over to other members of the team shortly. But before I do that, can I just ask, uh, you, you, you should see a polling question coming out to you now. And I'd just like to uh, know, we'd like to hear about what areas of the ISC that you currently engage in uh, or are familiar with. Let's see what, let's see what you say. Please, uh, please just respond to the poll that you should see in front of you now. Okay, I think we're starting to get some responses coming through. How are we going there? Perhaps we'll come back to uh, the response to that shortly. Oh, here we go. Fantastic. So it would appear that there's some great uh, um, numbers here. So a very large number of you are very aware of our ratings program and our event activity. Um, it's really good to see that we've got some uh, 
new opportunities coming through with our advocacy coalitions. So uh, Laura Harkin Small uh, is going to be talking about that in some depth to you today, uh, and certainly in each of these areas that's featured. So um, we look forward to being able to communicate that with you. If I can now hand over to uh, Cloda. Cloda is from our learning and development team, and she's going to talk to you about some of the great work that we're doing in that space. Thank you, Cloda. Thank you very much, Jane. Uh, my name is Cloda O'Loughlin. I'm the learning consultant at the IS Council. Uh, today, I'll talk a little bit about the learning offerings that we have available to members and the member benefits that come with that. Uh, firstly, all members receive a 35% discount on all training. And there are further discounts to be had when creating training packages for your organization. Next slide. So first we have training delivery. Uh, our on-demand courses are designed to be completed at any time at a pace to suit the learner, delivered fully online and accessible on mobile devices. These courses give participants the flexibility to fit learning into the work day. Our blended learning offerings encourage social connections and promote collaboration by combining digital resources, virtual or in-person facilitated sessions and supplementary resource materials that you can take with you to implement sustainability outcomes. Uh, our training packages, building the capabilities required to deliver sustainability outcomes is achieved by engaging our employees organization-wide and sharing skills, knowledge, and experience. Our executive workshops secure sustainability as a business priority, and our professional courses ensure you build the skills required to implement initiatives. Our RISE mentoring program encourages a transformative experience for both the mentor and the mentee, inspiring personal and professional development for both parties. With sustainability emerging as a core capability for future leaders, the ISC mentoring program will support organizations investing in their talented people and to develop next generation leaders in the sustainability profession. Uh, at the moment, we have 20 pairs of mentors and mentees located across New Zealand and Australia, across a range of se sectors in transport, water, government, energy waste, private and social, and all of the infrastructure life cycles. Our IS Capability Academy. Uh, which is the next, uh, will be home for the sustainability professionals to build their core technical still, skills and develop further their business and professional skills beyond the implementation of a rating. In order to contribute to a thriving industry, sustainability professionals are required to communicate effectively, adapt to change and understand how others adapt to change, leading and driving that change process continually innovating and seeing what was innovative a few years ago is now business as usual. It is critical we nurture creativity among our industry. Uh, next slide, please. Our leadership change and advisory offerings support the development of capabilities required of current and future sustainability leaders. For those in leadership change or advisory roles, the below courses will enable you to think differently about embracing the paradigm shifts act as a change agent in your organization to influence decisions and become a decision maker. Uh, IS for Executives is co-created between the IS Council and your organization. It is delivered by, uh, excuse me, delivered to your executive team by our executive team in person where possible. Similar to IS for Executives, IS for Managers is a private offering scheduled in-house where possible. It's tailored to suit the audience and the organization. This course is for managers or team leaders looking to apply practical tools and best practice principles to successfully deliver an IS related projects. Using case studies and real life project examples, learners leave with action ready implementation plans to lead their team in achieving IS success. Um, leading culture change, it's a blended learning offering which combines theory with practical examples and group activities, opportunities for individual reflection to embed learning and implementation success, supporting learners to navigate through change, drive culture and understanding how to build capability in their organization. 
Next slide, please. Our IS professional pathways are our best way, the best way for your employees to gain an industry recognized accreditation. We have a flexible IS for professionals learning pathway, and each pathway comprises four standard courses, followed by an exam. Learners can accredit in the implementation and assessment of different rating tools, a combination of on-demand resources support the instructor-led instructor -led workshops in which both technical skills and business capabilities are applied to real-world examples. Your ISAP accreditation will then be renewed annually with an exam to ensure your knowledge is current and practical for current industry standards. Delivered as a fully online package, IS Foundations introduces the framework and components behind the IS rating scheme to explore a sustainability mindset, including industry examples of sustainability outcomes. IS Foundations is included as part of IS Rating Skills, the core course within the IS for Professionals pathway. This course will enable the participant to plan for and implement successful sustainability initiatives that drive outcomes. At the end of this course, learners will be able to formulate the business as usual assumptions to develop a base case and assess materiality of IS credits as they apply to their projects. Um, IS accreditation in IS version 1.2 or IS version 2.1 will accredit learners as ISAPs and the skills and give them the skills to assess the achievement credit criteria collect evidence and prepare a submission for an IS rating. And IS for operations will give participants uh, the ability to implement, assess and submit evidence to achieve an IS for operations rating in their organization. Next slide, please. Allied professionals or technical professionals can further explore sustainability practices via one of, our, one of these courses. These offerings give us a deep dive into IS practices that can be implemented as part of an IS rating to support in achieving credit criteria. The best practice frameworks and guidance explored in these courses can also be undertaken as standalone sustainability initiatives to drive outcomes for specific sustainability objectives. Targeted at sustainability managers, project managers and procurement managers, sustainable procurement will show you how to enhance procurement properties practices in your projects or organization in relation to sustainability. IS for suppliers will support suppliers to position themselves as suppliers of choice in the infrastructure industry. And our materials calculator training will support uh, using and implementing the materials calculator. Please reach out to us to engage in initial discussions and propose your training needs. We will then create a package to suit your organization. To ensure the offerings selected enable participants to apply learnings to their role, we undertake a requirements gathering calls to discuss your business and learner needs and the team's current capabilities. Completing this first level analysis allows the IS Council to understand its core audience, identify their motivations and consider prior experience before delivering, beginning to develop the right package for you. Registration on public courses is available, which also gives members a significant discount if your employee is part of a member organization. And the implementation check-in to review course uptake and provide feedback and discuss further requirements is also available. Thank you very much for your time today. I'm going to move it on to Patrick, our Chief Delivery Officer, to tell you more about the ratings. Thank you very much, Clodagh, and I apologise to everyone. I don't have that melodic tone that, uh, that Clodagh commands so extraordinarily well. Um, so bear with me. So <clears throat> today I thought we'd, uh, and I was very thrilled to see how many me new member organisations and new member organisations are directly involved in our ratings process in some way, shape or form. So today I thought I'd give you a quick overview of ratings um, and then have a look quickly at some of the projects that have recently certified under the IS ratings and those that have recently registered as well. So if I could grab the next slide, please. Um, so ultimately the IS rating scheme is a set of rating tools, six rating tools to be exact, that measure 
across the entire life cycle of the asset. So we have an operations rating tool, a design rating tool, a construction or as-built rating tool, an, uh, a planning rating tool, I've gone backwards, uh, the I IS Essentials, which is for small projects under 100 million, and then we also have IS International. All of our rating schemes um, or rating tools measure across the quadruple bottom line. And you'll see the quadruple bottom line of governance, environmental, social, and economic. The credits or categories that sit underneath those things um, for IS version 2.1, um, as we have two versions in the market at the moment, IS version 1.2 and IS version 2.1, which is wonderfully confusing, but ultimately uh, is really representing the shift in sustainability, performance and behaviour across the industry uh, in Australia and New Zealand. The categories listed below have credits, 42 credits sitting underneath them. Uh, and that's, they're the benchmarks uh, that allow us to start to assess and assure sustainability outcomes. One of the wonderful things about the IS rating scheme is it's also directly mapped to the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, which means that your project can directly point to what they're contributing to at a global level as well as a local level. Next slide, please. As I said, the whole of life consideration across the rating tools Rating tools, there are four steps within the rating scheme or undertaking a rating. The first step is to register your project. Uh, and that's a very simple online form, uh, which will then act, trigger the, the start of your rating. From there, we will work with you to, direct, to find parameters of your rating and set up all of the necessary paperwork. We then move into the assessment phase. The assessment phase is where the project starts to assess themselves against the benchmarks. We attach an IS project manager to each project so that you have a reference point or a person to help uh, and advise, uh, advise you on, your pro on, on proceeding through the rating. We then move into the verification stage where third party verifiers will come in and assure that the outcomes you've achieved actually meet the requirements within the IS rating scheme. And then finally, my favorite part, the certification event where we actually get to publicly celebrate the extraordinary performance of projects across Australia and New Zealand. <clears throat> in undertaking an IS rating, it's important to, to recognise that you're actually entering into the most comprehensive and rigorous assessment process for infrastructure globally. This was a, a report completed by Stanford um, and funded by the Guggenheim and WWF, which assessed all of the infrastructure tools globally. Uh, and IS was, was, as I said, the most comprehensive and rigorous assessment process. It also called out the public procurement practices, which are a key success for driving ESG or sustainability performance forward within the Australian context in particular, um, but also called out the, the growing uh, position that New Zealand's taking in this, play, in this space as well. In terms of where our rating scheme currently sits, we have $217 billion worth of assets currently under rating. That is across uh, Australia and New Zealand. It equates to about 330 registrations, of which around about 220 are currently live. Uh, the rest have been certified. On the right-hand side, you'll see that we, we are driven by what we refer to as mandating practices, which are policy positions from different, um, different local or state government entities um, and federal government entities uh, that require an IS rating based on the size of the project. You can move to the next slide, please. For the first time ever, we've actually been able to say that sustainability makes good financial sense. In 2020, uh, the ISC asked RPS to undertake uh, a, a return on investment assessment of sustainability. And what it found was that for every dollar spent on an IS-rated uh, project, there was a return of investment between $1.60 and $2.40 uh, for that project. And that's above and beyond the normal economic multipliers of a, a, an infrastructure uh, asset. And it's important to note that this was a very conservative, conservative study. Um, we didn't include in that study any, ex any um, externalities or difficult to monetize uh, benefits that are delivered by uh, delivered by infrastructure and enhanced by the IS rating scheme. So a really exciting step forward in terms of uh, the discussion around the performance of sustainability on, um, 
on infrastructure assets, but also a really important position for us um, as an organization and a collective of members to be able to point to the reasons why beyond just the, the benefits that are driven and make the economic argument for the reasons why we need to include sustainability within our infrastructure considerations. Finally, as I was referring to earlier, we have what's known as tractional mandating practices and listed on the screen now are the current mandating practices uh, of, the, uh, of the different states and territories. I'm also very, very excited to say the Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning this morning released their, uh, their, stra their strategy, their infrastructure strategy, and called out in one of the action items is a drive towards all infrastructure in Queensland requiring an IS rating from all projects over 50 million. Um, so looking forward to the movements in the Queensland market as we start to realize that outcome. We might just move to the next one. So in terms of the latest projects to register for an IS, IS rating, so in the last two months, this is a list of projects that have registered for an IS rating. Um, really exciting to see sort of a broad width of, of areas, uh, or sorry, a broad width of regions that are registering, and great to see our New, Zealand, uh, our New, Zealand, New Zealand friends really leading the charge in terms of numbers. In terms of where, uh, where to next for the IS rating scheme, I will pass to Monique in a minute for, to talk through IS Essentials, which is uh, in pilot version at the moment. But I think it's also important to note that uh, what we're seeing with this economic recovery led uh, sorry, infrastructure-led recovery of that economy, I have really struggling all of a sudden, is that more and more um, there is a drive towards the need to assure ESG outcomes. So by taking the leadership position you have in becoming a member, you're really speaking volumes both to the trajectory of, of infrastructure in Australia, but also to your organisation and to your organisational commitment to ensuring that we are taking care of future generations and ensuring that our infrastructure leads the right legacy. With that in mind, I might pass to Monique um, before I get tongue-tied anymore. So thank you all for your time. Thanks very much, Patrick, and a very warm welcome for me too. Um, my name is Monique, I'm Head of Market Development at ISC, and we might jump to the next slide to talk a little bit about um, the ways in which we are trying to expand the impact of the IS rating. So um, you've heard Ainsley speaking a little bit about the why we're doing IS ratings and it's all about the impact. And as such, it's really important for us to make sure that this impact um, spans across different asset types, different asset sizes, different geographies, and also different parts of the infrastructure supply chain. And so we're focusing on a few initiatives, which I would like to um, introduce you to here and also to invite you to see if men, maybe any of those resonate and you would want to get involved in those as new members. Um, Patrick just touched on IS Essentials. IS Essentials is a new product that we've currently got in development and it's really aimed at products, uh, sorry, projects under uh, $100 million in CapEx. We are currently um, going um, on with, an, uh, with the pilot phase. We've got 17 projects um, that are testing this um, product with us. They're testing the new uh, technical menu. Um, they will be testing templates and tools and also eventually the digital version of IS Essentials. And so it's really looking at how do we make the tool very effective and accessible for those smaller projects. And yeah, currently still onboarding pilot projects. So if you've got any projects coming up that might suit that, um, please reach out and have a chat. Um, the other area that we're looking at is um, the, um, the finance side of um, uh, infrastructure and really understanding how IS ratings can help investors build um, um, sustainable um, portfolios and invest in sustainable assets. And on the other hand, on the project side, how projects can access preferential funding with better interest rates, um, such as through sustainability linked loans or bonds. So again, um, this is something if you're interested, um, please reach out. We've got a few um, case studies, such as the Reliance Rail um, refinancing, a really big project where 
um, IS ratings, OPS ratings was part of um, the sustainability target and helped them achieve um, uh, some really good conditions on, in their loan. Um, the next one, um, or the next two ones are about uh, different sectors. Um, for water, we have just launched a water advisory group um, meeting for the first time next week and bringing together a lot of experts and, and um, players in, in the water sector to really expand our, our reach across water, um, across water um, assets and also to build a community of practice and to share um, best practice what, um, uh, in system, sustainability in the sector. And then the second area is, is energy. Um, obviously, a um, big topic at the moment, lots going on, especially in renewable energy, hydrogen, but also infrastructure, also uh, transmission infrastructure. And obviously, there are inherent benefits of um, renewable energy projects and hydrogen, but it's also really important about how those um, projects are being built. And this is why we're really keen to make sure that IS ratings um, come in, uh, in into those projects as well. But we also appreciate that um, the way those projects are managed and, 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 and planned is a little bit different than to other asset types. Um, and therefore, we really want to make sure that we understand how IS ratings can help us there. So again, if you're active in that field and you've got any projects come up, I'm really keen to have a chat. And then lastly, um, Patrick also touched on IS International. We've got a lot of members that have a presence across the region, not just in Australia and New Zealand. And we've had some initial interest in really testing whether our IS international rating could apply in those uh, countries and had some um, early pilots as well. So if you are interested in testing outside Australia or New Zealand in the Asia Pacific region, please reach out. We'd be really um, keen to talk to you about that. Okay, and with that, I'm handing over to Ty Momberg. Right, uh, thank you very much, Monique. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Ty Momberg and I'm the Principal Technical Advisor with the technical team. Uh, next slide, please. As you can see from the slide, uh, the team is led by Dr. Kerry Griffiths, who's a technical director. We have two technical officers, Gabriella and Andre, and we are currently on the lookout for a data analyst. So if you um, know of anyone, please point them in our direction. Now that I've introduced the team, we can give you an overview of some of the technical projects that we are working on. Our next slide, please. Continuous improvement. Uh, continuous improvement is a very important part of the ISC and the technical team specifically. Uh, we are continually looking to improve the rating tools and systems. As you can see from the slide, there is the learning and, and analytics loop. Um, this process involves queries and feedback from the industry. This typically includes projects, project teams, working groups, and general feedback. Uh, these queries and feedback are then analyzed and triaged by the technical team, as they often require further stakeholder consultation or subject matter expert advice before solutions or updates to the tool can be undertaken. Uh, next slide. Thank you. This is the list of the current items on the technical work plan, and I'll talk through some of them just to give you an idea of what we are working on at the moment. Uh, you've heard quite a lot about that first item, IC Central, so I won't go into any detail on that. But another really big development that we're currently working on is the IS uh, version 2.0 planning rating review. We have recently appointed a technical consultant to assist with the review and update of this rating tool. Uh, you can see impact notes on the right-hand right side of the slide. The purpose of these impact notes is to communicate how to uh, drive positive outcomes on a particular IAC divine, defined sustainability issue. And ex the first example is modern slavery. We're working on a number of these, uh, so please look out for notifications regarding their launch to the market in the near future. The last item on this slide is materials calculated digitalization, uh, which I'll be talking about more on the next slide. Thank you. 
This is the digitalization of the current Excel IS materials calculator. So the developer, Bodaps, has done a lot of really good work. And we recently went out to a number of consultants and proponents uh, for beta testing. We received great feedback, which has been a combination of identification of bugs and also suggestions offered by the testers. Obviously, all the bugs are in the process of being fixed, and we are busy working with board apps to determine which suggestions are to be incorporated into MVP1, which is due for release in the near-ish future, uh, and then which items offer further down the track. The last slide from myself is just about technical working groups. Again, you've heard a lot about it today. But just a bit of background, uh, these groups were formed to support the development of rating tools, templates, training content, et cetera, and also to provide guidance and recommendations on benchmarks and technical developments. Uh, there are six groups as detailed on the slide. We have recently had our second meeting of the year with each of the groups. And we are starting to progress many of the ISC approved work plan items. The meetings are divided into knowledge sharing time, where we are able to learn from one another, as well as uh, from guest speakers, and also working time, uh, where we actively work on the specific work plan items. I'm now going to hand you back to Jane uh, to talk to iSupply. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Uh, conscious of time, I'll move through this very quickly, but I would say that for a number of you, this will be a, an area of really significant interest. So we're more than happy to talk to you uh, at another time to take you through more detail. Thank you, Tara. So in terms very briefly of the what and why of I supply, uh, it is our very easy to navigate online directory. It's of particular interest to our uh, site service and suppliers uh, who are looking at participating in our marketplace of products and services which uh, are likely to be of some potential interest to projects undertaking an IS rating. Um, it's really importantly an opportunity for you to uh, demonstrate sustainability outcomes and to uh, through full understanding of your product or service uh, link it to the appropriate credits within the ratings program. It's also a, an important opportunity to profile your company. Uh, and as I've said previously, uh, particularly with our Value Plus membership, uh, you in fact receive five no charge listings in this directory if that's of interest to you. Um, I won't spend any time on this particular side other than to say um, this points to our website. You'll see I supply, the iSupply tab and it's a very easy to use environment to see exactly what we um, present in the context of the directory. And next slide, please. I'll leave this one with you for those of you who pick up the webinar recording, but it's um, uh, Tyrell in fact created this um, really clever list of uh, all of the rules really of using the iSupply directory effectively. So have a look at that later. Um, it's very much worth a read. Okay, we might move to the next slide if we could. And I'd like to introduce um, Laura Harkin-Small, our General Manager of Advocacy. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Jane. And hello to everyone, it's lovely to meet you digitally. I'm really pleased to be um, here with you today to talk a little bit more about our advocacy program. So a uh, shorter version of what I just explained was in the advocacy team, we're focused on working with members and uh, stakeholders with the industry to transform uh, leading expert thinking to accelerate impact and change. We're very focused on reducing the learning curve so that we can have an industry and sector that's focused on people, places and purpose and delivering outcomes uh, for planet, people, prosperity and industry. We do that through three main types of work. The first one's around research and policy. The second one's around engagement and convening. And the third one is around partnership. And I'm 
briefly share a couple of examples about as new members how you you might be able to get involved in that work um, going forward. Next slide, please. So the first one here that I throw uh, I've shared with you is some examples of some exciting uh, uh, research and, and policy position papers we've been working on in partnership over the last eighteen months or so. They're all available on our website, or you can get in touch with our team to find out a little bit more. Um, we focus at the moment uh, on three key issue areas in particular, and that's around climate action, resilience, and inclusion. And the papers we've developed um, in partnership with our members, as well as other uh, um, industry stakeholders, including some of our peer peak bodies, including uh, Roads Australia, Australasian Railway Association, Australian Constructors Association, and Consult Australia, really focus around achieving ambition, alignment, and action about sustainable outcomes and how our industry is going to develop those. So if you're passionate about any of these issues and would like to contribute your voice, your knowledge, insights and resources and experiences, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We'd love to be able to work with you on some of these important pieces. Next slide. Another um, really important uh, and exciting initiative which others have touched on already in this session is the launch of our member coalitions. Uh, these are an opportunity for our members who are um, particularly passionate and want to contribute to some of the key issues and, um, of our time and how infrastructure might contribute to solving those challenges. The model itself is actually based on um, the Modern Slavery Coalition, which we're really pleased and proud to have been working on for the last two years uh, with some of our, um, our members, particularly from the road sector, but certainly it's diversified um, into infrastructure more broadly in recent times. Uh, we have just releases, uh, released uh, a, a broad list which focus on industry transformation, climate action, resilience, inclusion, as well as circular economy. These coalitions are essentially an opportunity for you to work with some of your industry colleagues from across asset classes, skill sets, perspectives, all, all um, focused on trying to address and make progress on a common issue. Uh, nominally, we're hoping that these or we're uh, expecting these teams to be working together across a three year period. So there's plenty of time to really make some traction on those particular issues as they progress. Next slide. Um, so in terms of all the different types of work um, we have uh, across the three year program, we're expecting each of uh, the coalitions to have a, a slightly nuanced approach to the actual work they do, depending on the skill sets and interest areas of the members involved, as well as the particulars of that issue that they're, they're looking and collaborating to address themselves. But I've shared here to give you some sense of the type of work available to you that's much broader um, than um, uh, potentially day-to-day -day work at, um, that you're involved in around really building capability and capacity and reducing the learning curve of not just those involved, but IC members and the industry more broadly. So, there is more information available on our website around these coalitions, but otherwise um, our contact details of myself and Carolyn and the advocacy team are available there and very welcome to reach out and we can chat more through the details. Um, next slide. Perfect. I think that's now time to hand over to Sally. Great. Thanks, Nora. Um, sorry about the um, issues that we had there. <clears throat> right. Um, okay, so events and networking. First, um, just a reminder if I can get you, if you've got any questions, you can submit those um, in the chat function at the bottom of your screen now. We've got a few minutes um, for Q&A at the end of this session, so um, feel free to put your questions in there. So events, we run quite uh, an extensive event program here at uh, the ISC. Um, these are our standard events that we offer on an ongoing basis um, across Australia and New Zealand. Um, the last couple of years we've done, um, as a lot of others have, quite a, a lot of webinars. Um, we are moving to do more in-person events as we are able to do that. Um, it's lovely for those of you that have been attending some in-person events lately. Isn't it great to get back together? Um, with your peers and colleagues. So we're doing as many in-person events as we possibly can. Um, certification events are also on our uh, calendar. We've just run a couple in the last week, one in Western Australia, celebrating and recognising those projects there that had gone through um, an IS rating. And then 
uh, also in Melbourne last week where we got together with um, over 100 of our colleagues and peers to celebrate and recognise events that had gone through certifications in that area. Um, those happen around across both Australia and New Zealand throughout the year. Networking forums, um, we are introducing these back into various locations um, across the um, both Australia and New Zealand. We haven't done as many of those thanks to COVID, um, so we're reintroducing those back into our calendar now. Uh, ISAP days, we um, run those again. These are dedicated for our um, the ISAP professionals. Those are more technical focused days. Um, we Our next one is going to be ahead of the Connect conference, um, which I'll talk about shortly, conferences. Um, also our executive luncheons, these are very targeted topic specific um, invitation only luncheons sort of aimed at C-suite and senior leaders. So keep an eye out um, for invitations to those events. We also run quite a few uh, thought leadership events. Um, these are often around a report launch or we look at best practice knowledge sharing type events. Um, so, and those are open to both ISC members and non-members depending on the topic. Uh, Connect conferences, I'll come to those in just a moment, and also our gala dinner and awards nights. So talking of conferences, our next conference coming up, um, which we are absolutely thrilled to be back in New Zealand, um, our last large event here was in 2019 uh, for a one day summit. So we're absolutely thrilled at the end of this month to be um, having our first conference in New Zealand for some time. This is a one day full program event, um, followed by a networking reception and a networking dinner. So come along, registrations are open now. Um, and that's gonna be um, a very busy, busy day. Ahead of that, we've got an ISAP day for our New Zealand um, ISAPs as well. So that will happen on June the 27th. Registrations open for that in the next day or so. Um, we've had great interaction with our partners here. So these organisations that you can see on your screen now are partnering with us for the Reconnect New Zealand conference. We've got a very small handful of opportunities left. So if you'd still like um, to be associated with this fantastic day and networking dinner, please do get in touch with us um, in the next couple of days. Um, right, sessions at the New Zealand conference. I've got them here, I won't read them out, I'm mindful of time, um, but we've got some really great um, sessions here. So come along and have a look at those. Uh, our next big event as well for conferencing, I'm delighted to announce will be in October. If you could just jump to the next slide there, Tara. Um, and that is our Connect conference in Queensland. Uh, sorry, we're on the awards. Oh dear, technical issues. Um, so Connect conference in October, here we go, 11th and 12th of October. Um, that is gonna be a festival of events over um, a few days at the um, middle of October there. So we've got our ISAP day, that'll be a full ISAP day and a site tour on the 10th of October. We're welcoming everyone to town and um, celebrating the fact that we can all get together again that evening on the 10th of October, followed by two jam-packed days of um, content on the 11th and 12th of October. We've got a certification dinner on the 11th of October. So we'll be celebrating all of those projects that have um, achieved ratings um, since our last event and then finishing the two days off with our gala dinner and the awards on the 12th of October. That is always a great night, so make sure you come along to that. Speaking of awards, um, awards for 2022 are currently open now. We've got 16 awards over three categories. Um, these are on your screen at the moment now. So we're looking at sustainability, leadership, industry impact, and individual contribution to a sustainable future. Um, these are open now. You'll see on our website, all the category details there, the criteria, submission criteria, eligibility, um, and everything you need to know is on there. But if you can't find it, please do reach out um, and get your submissions in soon. So uh, how do you get in touch with us? Um, you can give 
um, either myself or Paul, you can reach out through the events page on our website or email us events at iscouncil.org. So um, I'll hand back to Jane now. Um, and again, as a reminder, put, if you've got any questions for anyone from the team, pop them into your Q&A function at the bottom of your screen now. Thank you, Sally. Um, so as Sally said, uh, if I could ask uh, any of you who do have questions, please pop them in uh, into the Q&A. Uh, but before I look at those specifically, can I just ask for a quick poll? We'd like to get a sense of now that you've heard of all of the things that we do across the ISC, are there any new areas that you would potentially like to collaborate on or know more about in the future? So if you'd like to take a look at whether that is the case in respect to ratings, technical working groups, perhaps our events, our marketing and communications, learning and development, eye supply, uh, or our advocacy coalitions. And as Laura spoke about, we have five uh, new advocacy coalitions, and we would be really delighted to hear from a number of you about your potential in, in, say that again, your potential interest uh, in being a participant on one of those. So if I can get your answers, we'll have a quick look uh, at what you all said. Well, that's fantastic. Laura, you've just filled your advocacy coalitions, I think, with a number of our new members, which is really uh, really great to see um, some significant interest in the learning and development area, technical working groups. Um, so uh, that's fantastic. Thank you for that contribution. It really does help us to work through um, what we need to provide you ac access to more often. Okay, so before we close, um, at the moment, it doesn't look like there are any questions coming through. Please don't hesitate to uh, pop a question up if you have one. Uh, we're certainly happy to answer questions uh, post the webinar and don't want you to hesitate at all if you'd like to speak to one of us or uh, have an email exchange, whichever. Um, one of the things that we really do pride ourselves on is being available to you to make sure that your journey with us as a member is a really uh, successful one. All right, well, there doesn't seem to be anything more coming through. So um, I would like to thank you all once again on behalf of all of the team. Um, we're delighted you've made this decision to join us as a member. We do hold this particular webinar every six months and we do find that some of our members pop back in to have a refresher because um, there is so much going on sometimes um, uh, you really need to have a, a bit of an update on what's available to you. So don't ever hesitate to join us. Um, if you could just make sure before you uh, sign off, if you could please uh, respond to our quick survey. It's very short, five questions, just to see uh, uh, what sort of value this provided for you. And thank you again. I really look forward to speaking to as many of you as possible in the near future. Thank you.